With more than 200,000 nurses needed over the next several years, we want to focus on how do we best prepare our students in the classroom and the clinical setting and the skills lab so that they are able to consistently demonstrate competency and provide the safest care possible to patients. Welcome back everybody to Dr. Sellers Educate where our mission is simple. It is to support all nurse educator colleagues on the journey to achieve nurse educator excellence, including being successful on the NLN C&E exams. Now, if you are watching us for the first time, welcome. We're delighted that you're here. Make sure you subscribe to this channel so every single time a new episode is released, you'll be no notified right away. And if you're returning, we're thrilled that you're back as well. If you haven't yet, print out your study worksheet, okay? We made a couple of tweaks to it. We want you to do two things on that study worksheet. Number one is write down today's date, whatever date you're watching the snapshot. And number two, we want you to write down what your objective is. What is it that you wanna walk away having accomplished over the next several minutes that we'll spend together? We're continuing on our journey to look at the importance of development of clinical judgment skills and what are those strategies that we as educators can integrate into our classroom to help support the development, development of this very important skill? We're gonna be using Billings and Halstead as our primary text, and then we're gonna take a look at some content to ensure that we're all on the same page. First, to recap, 23% of new nurse graduate nurses are safely able to recognize urgent changes in patient condition and identify appropriate responses to manage critical changes in a patient's condition. Now, this was cited from work that was done by Kevin Owen in 2017, but how many of us know that nurse graduates are still struggling to make safe patient care decisions or even to make sense of the cues that they may witness? Okay, so we stated that statistic um, last week in our last net snapshot and we just wanted to re-emphasize the data and what it is telling us okay so again we are using billings and halstead teaching and nursing as our primary text and you're going to turn to chapter 14 okay this is going to be the primary chapter that will, it will at least get you started as you continue to explore this very important concept so let's take a look at the thought-provoking question so according to constructivist learning theory, which teaching method is most likely to enhance students' development of clinical judgment skills? So we have A, a traditional lecture format, B, interactive case studies, or C, independent reading assignments. Okay, so go ahead and write down your thoughts and we'll see what you think um, as we wrap up. At the end, we always take a look at our thought-provoking question and like to talk about the rationale for the best answer and the incorrect answer. Okay, so clinical judgment, how do we take steps forward to support students' development of this really important skill? Well, number one is what we wanna cover in this snapshot. We have to be able to incorporate learning activities that focus on development of clinical judgment to best prepare our graduates for practice. So how do we do that? Well, first, we wanna make sure that we are looking at the evidence related to theory, as an example, constructivist learning theory, and we want to make sure that we're also collaborating with our partners across the curriculum to ensure that we are aligning our didactic elements. So we want to make sure that we are integrating theory into our um, clinical experiences as well. So we introduce theory, we introduce the concepts of safe patient care practices in the classroom, and we align them with those clinical skills that students are practicing in the skills lab and the sim lab. And then ultimately students are able to analyze the what, the how, the when, whenever they get in the clinical setting. Okay, so it's really important for us to work with our colleagues across the curriculum, across the various settings to ensure that we are closing the loops as, as it relates to the knowledge gaps that students may have that we're walking them through every single phase of the NCSVN model. Um, we looked at that model previously, but we'll go ahead and drop it in the description here so you can take a look at the clinical judgment model that was developed by NCSVN. Um, we know that starts with having a recognition for the cues. So what are those symptoms that patients are presenting 
when it comes to the clinical setting and our nursing students able being able to identify when something's not quite right with this patient and what is the data telling us? What are the specific indicators that's contributing to the instinct that the nursing student is having about the fact that something's not quite right? And then second, because we know we can't stay there, is what does that information mean, right? That's when we start prioritizing the cues. So it's great when we recognize them and we want to reward our students for that and really acknowledge them for being able to, to recognize the cues that something's not quite right. And then we want them to be able to articulate exactly what that is. The framework that we want to use is, as an example is SBAR. Okay, that way the student is going to walk through the situation, the background, the assessment, and then the recommendations. What are going to be those next steps? So prioritization of cues, and then we know we look next at hypothesis. So what is it that we think is going on with this patient and what steps do we think we need to take to return this patient to a, a status of stable in the hopes that they will continue to heal? All right, so if you chose B, interactive case studies, you are correct. Now let's talk about why. And this is tied to constructivist learning theory again. Table 14.1 is going to be an excellent reference for you to dig deeper into constructivist learning theory. And what are some of those teaching strategies that are aligned with this theory? Well, this theory focuses on active engagement. So it's that hands-on learning experience. It's that experiential knowledge that students develop. We know it begins with practice and it continues through reflection. And then students are thinking about what worked well, what didn't work well, and what am I going to do differently next time? So the interactive case studies allow students to really learn from their experiences, those real life clinical scenarios. That's going to help promote both critical thinking and clinical reasoning skills. And we know that clinical judgment is a combination of both of these really important steps in the learning process. We want students to be able to articulate the clinical reasoning and we want them to act on and execute those steps to interventions that include interventions to help to help the patient return to that um, stable state. Okay, so ultimately that's what we want our students to be able to embrace and we want to provide formative experiences with our students to coach them and to guide them in their decision making. And then we ultimately wanna have a summative evaluation where we have validated the students are competent in providing safe patient care and using clinical judgment skills. All right, this is going to wrap up our snapshot for this episode, and we are always happy to hear from you all. Reach out to us, info at Dr. Sellers Educate, if you have any questions. And until next time, have a great one, everybody.